So I wanted to try something a little bit different with this one. As I am looking for the oppor- I've been looking for the opportunity to talk a little baseball. So we're going to try and talk a little bit of baseball using baseball mango as the background because on December the 4th, the contemporary the contemporary baseball era committee aka one of the legs of the veterans committee will meet to announce this year's inductions into the baseball hall of fame through the veterans committee which happens every year it's just a different leg of the committee meets every year the veterans committee consists of chipper jones greg maddox jack morris ryan sandberg lee smith frank thomas alan trammell as the hall of famers Some executives, which include Theo Epstein, Artie Moreno, um, Kenny Williams, and some other baseball executives and members of the media and baseball historians. But there is a... uh, The 16-member committee will meet to consider the following members for Hall of Fame induction. Those include... Albert Bell, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Dale Murphy, Don Manningly, Fred McGriff, and Rafael Palmero, as well as Kurt Schilling. I think it is unfortunate that Rocket, Bonds, and Schilling are up for eligibility this year, considering the fact that 2022 was there last year on the Hall of Fame ballot as normal Hall of Fame capable inductor inductees. So it is unfortunate that this is their for, this is their year of eligibility on the Veterans Committee because I think it would be better for everybody if that wasn't the case for them this year specifically. But that's just me. Because, well, if they were if they were going to get inducted in the Hall of Fame, wouldn't they have gotten inducted back in January and not with the Veterans Committee? So what is going to make much of a difference? Will this make much of a difference, in my opinion? I think that some of the people on this ballot should have been switched out. I think that there are plenty of people, a plethora of people from the 1980s, 1970s, and 1990s that have been passed over that should have been inducted into the Hall of Fame but were never given the opportunity. I mean, for example, Jack Morris was grandfathered in. uh, Jack Morris was grandfathered into the Hall of Fame and was given an opportunity to get inducted into the Hall of Fame after they changed the Hall of Fame rules because initially the rule was 15 years, but then they changed it to 10. And that was after Jack Morris and I believe Lee Smith were the two that got grandfathered in. So if they never changed that rule, then then Jack Morris, if they were never grandfathered in, I should say, if they were never grandfathered in, then Jack Morris and Lee Smith would have never gotten the opportunity to get inducted into the Hall of Fame and take their rightful place in Cooperstown. Because you have, at one point, the person who was the all-time leader in saves missing the postseason and also one of the greatest postseason pitchers in baseball history in Jack Morris and one of the elite pitchers from his time missing the Hall of Fame Why? Because he wasn't one of the greatest pitchers. But he was elite. You know, we're not going to talk about, we're not going to talk about who will get inducted in the Hall of Fame. That is a month down the road in January. So we'll talk about that closer to the election into the uh, 2023 class. After the fact, I wanted to touch on this because I wanted to, test the waters, see if baseball is viable. But in my opinion, I think there is still a sour taste in some people's mouth. Yes, I know it is not the baseball writers that are writing. I mean, that are doing the electing. It's the executives. It's the people who played with Bonds, Clemens, Palmero, McGriff, Dale Murphy, Kurt Schilling, yada, 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 yada. I understand that. 
But the fact of the matter is, I think if they were going to get inducted, they would have played, they would have gotten inducted in January, not now. Because I do think that the Veterans Committee, in my opinion, their job is to right the wrongs done by the baseball writers. I'm not saying that Clemens and Bonds not getting in was wrong. What I'm saying is that if the players were going to induct them, maybe if this was five years down the road, that thing, that would have changed. But right out of the gate, right after they just missed it, I think, number one, it's poorly timed because something else should have been in this spot next year. I think that it is poorly timed because you could have had something else in this position. And I think it's poorly timed because um, because you can't sit here and warrant this way of thinking. You, you know what I mean? Like it's you they were denied the Hall of Fame in January and should not be up for eligibility in February, you know, in December. Like, they, they missed it at the beginning of the year. They shouldn't have a second chance at the end of the year. I think it's poor poor performing for, or poor decision-making for, um, for the Hall of Fame on their part that they should have picked a different era to induct this year. I know it's planned ahead. I know that there's a reason why they did it. But the fact of the matter is, I think they could have chosen better for this had they, you know, planned ahead. But I think that's the best way to put it. As far as I'm concerned, it's not that... I'm just happy that other people will be getting the spotlight when when the Hall of Fame induction rolls around. And it's not going to just be fixated on Clemens and Bonds. In my opinion, I think it was a very short-sighted thing and that this distraction was exactly the reason why Donnie Baseball, one of the best managers of this era, Don Manningly, missed the Hall of Fame. I think it was a short-sighted thing and a mistake that Don Manningly did not miss, that Don Manningly did not get inducted in the Hall of Fame when he was up for eligibility during his career but I would also like to point out, it's crazy for me to think that Kurt Schilling, Roger Clemens, Barry Bonds, and Rafael Palmero have been retired for 15 years because to be considered for the Veterans Committee, have players who have been retired at least 15 years and played most of their careers after 1980. So it's crazy for me to think that, but I think that in my opinion, Fred McGriff, that I, in my opinion, Fred McGriff, Raphael Palm, I mean, uh, Fred McGriff, Don Manningly, are, in my opinion, the favorites. I go right along with what our executive friends and the baseball writers say, because I do firmly agree with what they're saying, that Fred McGriff deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, should have been inducted when he was up for eligibility, but they chose to not induct him because other people took the spotlight. So I'm just hoping that in this situation, that doesn't happen again where Bonds and Clemens take the spotlight again. I don't know that uh, Kurt Schilling will get the love. I don't know that Rafael Palmero will get the love. I don't know that Albert Bell will get the love. It does not mean that they were not great players. It just means that I think Kurt, the Veterans Committee will also think from the standpoint of the Hall of Fame and what the Hall of Fame would want, even though they are independent. I don't know that the Hall of Fame would want Kurt Schilling in the Hall of Fame. And hell, I don't even know if Kurt Schilling would want to go in in the Hall of Fame, to be honest with you. But my take on it is, if I had to guess who's going to be given the nod on December the 4th from the Veterans Committee, I think that I'm going to go with Don Manningly 
getting inducted in the Hall of Fame. 100%, I think Don Mattingly deserves the to wear the stripes in the Hall of Fame and to be another Yankee in the Hall of Fame. I think at the rate he's going, he could be consider he could be a manager that is inducted in the Hall of Fame, because in my opinion, in my opinion, you got to think about it like this: Don had the same injury that took care of David Wright and shortened David Wright's career, the same back injury or a similar back injury. In 14 years, from 21 year from 22 years old to 34 years old, Don Mattingly had 2,100 hits and 22, 2, 2, 2 in home runs. Adding to the idea that if Donnie was able to play a little bit longer, I think he would have had Hall of Fame numbers. Because by far his best season in 1986, well, Actually, his best season was 1985 when he won the MVP. In back-to-back in -back seasons, 145 RBIs, 48 doubles, 53 doubles, 238 hits, 742 plate appearances. He played every single game in 1986. 573 slugging, 976, 967 OPS, and 388 total bases. He did better than his MVP season in 1985 and 1986 at the age of 25 and finished second. You know, it, he's won a gold glove. He's won number, a number of gold glove awards. He's not won the silver slugger. He's a former MVP award winner. He's a former, unfortunately, well, the one thing he's never done is won a World Series because when he was with the Yankees, the Yankees weren't a winning team. But the fact of the matter is, Donnie Baseball deserves to be nodded into the Hall of Fame. And the easiest thing I can say with Fred McGriff is this. Freddie McGriff won a World Series in Atlanta. He was the glue that held the team together in Atlanta. He helped set the stage for the World Series champions in Toronto. And also, 493 home runs, 2,400 hits. You know, yes, in an era where people, you know, the ball was leaving the yard at an alarming rate, Fred McGriff is the embodiment of someone that got overshadowed by by the steroid era. He is the embodiment of somebody that got overshadowed by the steroid era. And there is absolutely no reason why somebody who was as consistent a person as Fred McGriff was, there is no reason why somebody who was legitimately an elite player that could leave the yard at the snap of the at the snap of a finger there is no reason why somebody like Fred McGriff should not get that call on December the 4th alongside Dodd Manningly telling him that in July he will be joining the hallowed halls in Cooperstown. I know that there is somebody within that ring, within those ranks, that may be getting a little bit more love now, that being Dale Murphy, who I feel like was more of a, is more of an analytical base player. Like he's getting love because of his glove, because of what the analytics show now, and that maybe he's getting a little bit more love now than he would have back in the day or he did back in the day. So I approve, but I think that you're not going to see four or five, six or, you know, you're not going to see half of the group of the players on the players ballot for the veterans committee, get inducted into the hall of fame. I don't see that happening to be honest with you. I don't see that happening because 
I, I just don't see it happening. That a lot of people do view the Hall of Fame as something that should be a smaller class, and the focus should be placed on the actual ballot, not the Veterans Committee. But the talk's not going to die down with the Veterans Committee because Carlos Beltran is one of the people that are up for Hall of the Hall of Fame consideration next year. The question's going to lend to people like Jeff Kent, people like Gary Sheffield, people like Manny Ramirez, Billy Wagner, and others who are running out of time to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I don't see Manny getting inducted anytime soon for the same reason, what, well, for even more of a reason than Bonds and Clemens, but Sheffield, Kent, and Billy Wagner are running out of time for their Hall of Fame eligibility. Kent is in his 10th season, Sheffield's in his 9th season, and Billy Wagner's in his 8th season. So bo all three of those players should be Hall of Famers. Jeff Kent holds the dubious distinction of being the leader in home runs among second basemen in all of baseball history. So you have every other top player from every other position, Mike Piazza, Mariano Rivera, you know, who, you know the other record holders in the Hall of Fame why isn't Jeff Kent? Why isn't Jeff Kent? Jeff Kent was hitting home runs at second base when nobody else was hitting home runs at second base. The fact of the matter is Jeff Kent belongs in the Hall of Fame, and it would be a travesty if Jeff Kent is left up for the Veterans Committee rather than being inducted on his own merit like he should be, in my opinion come January, but that's something we break down closer to when the Hall of Fame induction comes out. I believe it usually comes out between January 20th and January 25th, so we'll talk about that then. This was more of a test run, so in my opinion, you'll see two people get inducted on Sunday, Sunday, December the 4th, with the Veterans Committee announcement to come. You will see Don Manningly, Fred McGriff, join the hallowed halls of Cooperstown with the possibility of Dale Murphy being the second, one, the third person announced, and or maybe Kurt Schilling. I think one of those two will hover around the middle, but I would be shocked if Don Manningly and Fred McGriff are not chosen by their a group of their peers and people that they played for and against, or with and against, that they will not be, that it would surprise me, nearly shock me, if they're not given the love that they deserve on, de on Sunday, December the 4th. Not to say that the time won't come for Bonds, Clemens, or anybody else, but now is not the time. I think if it was another year, down the road, maybe, but I think now's the time to give Manningly and McGriff the spotlight that they deserve. These have been my thoughts on the Veterans Committee, the inevitable, the eventual Veterans Committee induction set to take place on Sunday, December the 4th at the Winter Meetings in San Diego. The first time that the Winter Meetings will be live with people there since COVID. So this is the first Winter Meetings with people and live reports and just everything back to normal since 2019. So it's going to be a special one. And not just for that, it will be special because of who will be joining the hallowed hall of the Cooperstown on Sunday, December the 4th. With that being said, these have been my thoughts on the, on the Veterans Committee induction and another attempt at some secondary content. Let me know your thoughts on content like this and who you think will be joining the hallowed halls of Cooperstown either through the, vet, the Contemporary Baseball Era Player Ballot or the Ford C. Frick Award, where, where an announcer gets the distinction of being inducted into the hallowed halls for going above and beyond in their call of duty as an announcer and being among the greatest to ever sit in the booth and call the game we all love. Let me know down in the comment section below your thoughts on this type of content and the Hall of Fame's inevitable voting. You can also let me know that you like, the, you like this type of content or you're enjoying this type of content by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel for more content just like this that you can only find right here at Wrestling Express.
And before you go, do not forget to ding down that notification bell to always know when a new video is up on the channel, because you never know what type of video I will get to next. Until next time, I will see you again soon.